So, it is a brand new year, and it's a brand new day. And we're trying brand new things. Did you guys notice that we had some upgrades to all of our multimedia this week? Please tell me you noticed, because I spent about 30 hours putting it all together. No, seriously, we're always trying to improve. Um, You know, you'll hear this a little bit later, but anything that's not growing is dying. So we're always continuing to improve, always. Do you have that attitude in life, that you're always continuing to improve? Amen. Amen. So um, I think I'm going to pray, and then we'll get into this. So Father, we thank you for this brand new day, this brand new year, this first Sunday, God, of a, of a new year, 2022. Lord, we're thankful for, God, your faithfulness in, in this past year. Lord, it had plenty of challenges, but, God, it also had plenty of miracles. And, Lord, through it all, you were faithful to every person in this room and every person on this web. You were faithful, God, to every one of us to get us to where we are right now. And God, we glorify you for that. We thank you for that, God. It is by your grace that any of us are here right this second. And we thank you, God, for this past year. But Lord, we thank you and we look forward with great expectation, God, for this brand new year that we're moving into in 2022. We thank you, God, for all that you are going to continue to do in all of our lives, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. So happy new year, guys. Some years when they pass, you're like, good riddance. Anybody feel like that about 21? Hey, how how many of you guys, 2021 was the best year of your life? One person. How many of you, 2021 was the worst year of your life? We got that too. Everybody else is somewhere in that spectrum. This is what's amazing about about life is somebody just had the best year of their life and somebody just had the worst year of their life. But you know what? It's what we just sang through it all. God is holy. He's faithful. He's good. And he sees us through every season, doesn't he? Amen. So as we start this new year, I always do this. I seek the Lord and ask. I'm trying to find this little thing. I don't think it got... Stuck on here. Oh, it didn't. Hold on one second. There's a little clip that keeps this from falling off my ear. All right. Thank you, guys. Anyway, we got it. So, as we move into a new year, I think it's good to look back a little bit because you don't know where you're going unless you know where you've been. Amen? Another saying is, Those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it, right? So there's something as you look forward about looking backwards. You guys with me? So I want to do something really quick. I want to do kind of a year in review. Now, many of you, we didn't even meet until later in the year. We didn't meet you guys until September, some of you. Uh, But I want to take you back to the beginning, not of our journey as a church, but to the beginning of this year. Uh, January, this just like this, the first Sunday in January, we made a decision uh, through some circumstances that were out of our control. Obviously, we all know about COVID and all these different realities we've had to deal with. Before we had this building, we met in other locations. Well, we decided in January to go back to the living room where we all began. So it was almost like we came back around full circle. And I want to tell you, from January all the way through the summer... For those of you that were there, you know what I'm talking about. We had some of the sweetest, most powerful times of worship I've ever experienced in my life. In my living room. And and it was just this awesome move of God. The Lord was just doing something special. You know there's seasons, right? Every time there's a different season, there's always different seasons with the Lord. But for whatever this season was, God just was just drawn so near to us. And we were just worshiping our hearts out. And, and we called it living room worship. I don't know if you've... We've got videos on YouTube. You can go look some of them up. But we had this whole season in the beginning of the year called living room worship. And man, we just got together and worshiped Jesus. And I'm telling you, it was so special. So fast forwarding to July, 
July 22nd was our third year anniversary from the public launch of the Father's House. And so we always do a celebration where we get together and have like an anniversary. I think anniversaries are important. So we got together. It actually didn't happen until August 8th. So it was a couple weeks after the actual anniversary. But how many of you guys were at that August 8th? Uh, we did it at the gathering on a Sunday night. And it was our third year anniversary. Well, here's the cool story. The Lord told me to say two things that night that were not realities at all when I said them. He said, I want you to tell the people we're getting ready to get our own building. And I want you to tell the people we're getting ready to move to Sunday morning. Neither of which we had ever done in three years of being a church. That was August 8th, right? The very next day on August 9th. A man who I had never met who owned this building that we're in contacted me and said, Hey, you don't know me, but I've been watching your live stream since you were all the way back at the college. I have a piece of property in Wilkesboro that I want to let you use free of charge if you want to come take a look at it. Somebody get excited about that. August 8th, I stood up behind a pulpit in faith and said, Hey, here's what God said. We're getting ready to get a building. We're going to Sunday morning. The next day I literally had the key to this building that's miraculous okay so challenges and miracles we didn't have a place to meet other than my own home because of various circumstances and then the Lord just boom hey here you go gift wrapped this is your place and this has been an awesome awesome place and the kids building up here we're almost we're so close to finishing it uh, we're gonna make that a top-notch children's facility and youth uh, but this was all a gift from the Lord to us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm, I mean, I think sometimes, unless you recount the miracles of God, you, you're quick to forget. You remember in the Old Testament, he would always tell his children, remember what I did. Right? Because we can forget. But when you think back at the goodness of God and what he did, that's why I said 2021, full of challenges for sure, but also full of miracles. Now, I'm speaking as a church, but in your individual life, same thing. There's challenges and there's miracles. Amen? So now, when we came in here for the very first Sunday, September, I believe it was 5th or 6th. It was the first Sunday in September. We did three new things. One, we'd never had a building that was ours. Number two, we'd never met on a Sunday morning. And number three, Derek Kilby showed up. Where's Derek? Hey. He must be up there corralling some kids up at the uh, kids' building. But, I mean, you want to talk about a big Sunday. We literally called it a relaunch. It was like starting over again. And we did not know how much that was going to be the case. This past September, it was like we started again from scratch. So, really, even though we're more than three years old, in this version, we're three or four months old. Isn't that amazing to think about? So we're in the beginning of the beginning of the beginning. You ever see a little newborn baby? They're just this tiny little thing. But you know what? Everything that that baby's going to become is already in that baby. It's called DNA. Do you know Andre the Giant was a little baby at one point? Right? That little baby's already got prepackaged what it's going to grow into. The father's house. The DNA is already in here of what we're going to grow into. And it's going to be something amazing. I'm telling you. But we're just in the baby form. And it's all cute, and everybody likes little babies. But that's where we're at right now as a church. But it's exciting because we're growing, which is what we're going to talk about today. So going back again to 2021, you guys know this if you've heard me preach ever. The theme that the Lord gave me for last year was it's time to build. I actually did a three-part series in here from this pulpit about what that means, it's time to build. You know that Jesus said in Matthew 16, Upon this rock, I will build my church. That's the only thing you see that Jesus says he's building. Upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So the Lord was inviting us into that reality of, hey, I want you to come join me and let's build together. Isn't that exciting? So we have been, all of 2021, focused on building. And do you know the most important part of building? Laying foundation, right? I've said this before. This little shed out here is sitting up on cinder blocks because all it is is a tool shed. But if you're going to build a skyscraper, you're going to have to have a foundation that might take you years to build before you ever start building up. 
The size of what you're building determines the foundation that you have to create. Amen? So we are really laboring, and all this past year, and we'll continue to do this, we're laying foundation, we're building for the future. And so some of this stuff, you know, you'd be like, man, it just seems like we kind of keep doing the same. No, we're doing this deliberately to lay foundation scripturally. And you know what the foundation is. It is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other foundation. And if we're doing our jobs right, we're laying the foundation of Jesus Christ in the church. Amen? Amen. It's okay for you guys to talk back to me. It don't scare me. So here's what the Lord told me for this year as I was seeking him. For 2022, it is time to grow. I just told you about that little baby. You know a baby's number one job? Just grow. Just grow. That's all a baby does. Well, they do some other things. They mess up diapers and they eat and stuff. But they grow is really the main thing a little baby is doing. Have you ever seen from zero to one how much a baby grows? It's like amazing. And then you go... From one to two. I mean, the growth of a baby is rapid. It's not like an adult. We kind of level off and plateau. But when you're a baby, man, you're changing. Sometimes you can look at your baby. All you parents think about this. You look at your baby, and the next day you're like, I think the baby grew. Have you ever done that? It's like, I just looked at you yesterday, and you look bigger. Because babies are growing so rapidly. Well, that's where we're at as a church. We're in that kind of a mode. But it's time to grow. So you ready to, to jump into this? Everybody stretch? Everybody get ready? Anything alive is growing. Amen? This is a church alive, and this is a church that's growing. And I'll add this too because we've got a lot of people that have come from a long way off historically. A church alive is worth the drive. Seriously, historically, we have had people come here from an hour away. At one point, more people were coming from an hour away than people who lived here locally. But a church alive is worth the drive. Amen? The opposite of that, anything not growing is dead. Do you realize that if you stop growing, you start dying? In any facet of life, anything not growing is dead. Have you ever been a part of dead things? Have you ever been a part of a dead church? It's not growing. It doesn't have the life. It's not moving. It's just, God forbid that we would be there. We are wanting to be alive. I'm going to get into scripture and review some of where we've been. If you've got your Bibles, you can read along, or I will continue to keep them on the screen for us to reference. So Ephesians 4, starting in verse 11. Now these are the gifts that Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. This is what's called the five-fold ministry. Here's a little bit of review, but I say this all the time. How many out of the five do we need? I need all. I mean, if God's making me an offer and he says, hey, I'll give you five, and I say, no, I just want two. That's on me. That's not on God. That's not on the giver. That's on the receiver. You hear what I'm saying? But And I can get into, we have already gotten into big long teachings about this, so I'm not going to go back into that. You can look it up on YouTube. Uh, But these are the gifts. Now, I want to show you something so that you won't forget this. So you got five fingers on your hand. This is a five-fold ministry. Let me show you the easy way to remember this. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, shepherd, teacher. Let me show you why. The thumb, apostle, is the only finger that can touch every other finger. Pretty interesting, right? You can't really do that with your other fingers. It's really hard. But this one is designed by God to touch every other finger. There's a revelation in that. The prophet, he's the pointer. He points it out. The prophet sees and goes right straight to it, right? The pointer. Now, I'm not going to do the evangelist. But the evangelist is the longest finger. The evangelist has the furthest reach. The ring finger is the shepherd, the nurturer. I don't know if it's true or not, but they say that there's a vein that goes from this finger all the way to your heart. That might be a wives' tale. I don't know. Medical people tell me if it's true or not. But the point being, it's your ring finger close to the heart. That's the shepherd. The teachers, the smallest finger, the smallest details. Teachers are involved in the details. The smallest detail. You get this. You'll never forget the five-fold ministry now. You just saw that visual. Did that help anybody? I think that's fun. But the five, we need these for what purpose? Their responsibility 
is to equip God's people, not just to be a bunch of superstars and, hey, everybody watch me. No, that's not the point. The responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and to build, there it is, build up the church, the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. Next verse. This will continue until. Boy, until is a huge word. People that believe these ministries don't still exist, I just want to point them to this one word, until. Until what? These ministries will exist until when? Until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Are you there yet? Do you think that the body of Christ is there yet? Until we are, we still need the five-fold ministry. It's the gifts of God to help grow us up. Amen? Which is what we're going to talk about today. Instead... We speak the truth in love, growing every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly, the Lord does, as each part does its own special work, helps the other parts grow, so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. You want to see what the New Testament church is supposed to look like? I'm going to read it again. This is New Testament Christianity. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly, as each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. That is what it looks like to have an alive church. Amen? That's what it's going to look like in 2022 to have growth right there. So I want to talk about growing deep because there's a lot of different ways to grow. But kind of my specialty, everybody's got their own lane that they kind of specialize in. What God's graced and gifted me with is taking people deeper with God. That's my call. There's other people that will do other things, but what I'm supposed to do is get you from here to further. Get you from where you've been comfortable into kind of, uh, I haven't been here yet. You get it? Pushing you out into new places. It's just like with my children. I love seeing my kids do new things. You ever seen that? Like, everything's new to a kid. They've never seen anything when they start, so everything's new. But I'm telling you what, in our Christian journey, there is so much new stuff that you haven't seen yet. Imagine you being like that little kid. And my job is to help us all to go deeper. So let's read some scriptures. I'm going to go back one chapter. We were in Ephesians 4. I'm going to go back to Ephesians 3, starting in verse 16. This is Paul's prayer for the church. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, man, that sounds good, that he will empower you with inner strength through what? His spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong, growing deep roots. And may, and may you have the power to understand with all God's people how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. Do you know what we got to grow in? That reality right there. We've got to be so secure in the reality of who God is and who his love is for us. You know you should never go one single day of your life doubting the Lord's love and care and provision for you. You got to get rooted in this. You got to get deep in this. You got to get grounded in this. When you get here, you won't be shaken by the storms of life. When you build your life right here. He said, may you experience the love of Christ. Though it's too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now I love this verse. Everybody loves Ephesians 3.20. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us. To accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Some translations say more than we could ask, think, or imagine. Amen. God is able to do way more than you've ever imagined. Don't limit God in your thinking or in your religious boxes. God wants to do more for you than you've ever even known is even possible. Amen? We're talking about growing. Everybody want to grow this year? Or you just want to stay the same? No, 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 no. We're going to all grow together this year. Amen? So go to Colossians chapter 2 starting in verse 6. And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus, your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots, here we go again, grow down into him. Let your lives be built on him. 
then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Oh, these are rich scriptures. Let your roots sink deep into what? The reality of who Jesus Christ is. Let your roots sink deep into what? The love and the care that he has for you. These are deep roots that we have to get established in our lives. I just added this verse because it's the next one, and boy, do we ever need to hear this today. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and not in the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. Do you think that is what we're looking at every day? Turn the TV on, turn the radio on, just live on planet Earth. You're hearing a bunch of high-sounding nonsense that comes from humans and the powers of this world and not from Christ. We don't need no more of that. We need to get our roots sunk deep into the person of Jesus Christ. Amen? Listen to this verse. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. We would agree. We just talked about Emmanuel, God with us. We talked about Jesus walking the, the earth in the fullness of God. But listen to this next verse, verse 10. So you also are now com complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. Boy, you could sit there and meditate on that one right there for the rest of your life. The fullness of God is in Christ, and now you've been given fullness because of your union with Christ. How far beneath that are we living? We got some room to grow, don't we? Do you know how much room we have to grow? I'm going to tell you right here. Here's the punchline. Until we're exactly like Jesus. That's how much room you have still to grow. Anybody got room to grow? I'll put both hands up, a foot up. We got room to grow. Nobody's arrived. Nobody knows it all. Nobody's walking on water yet. I hadn't seen anybody yet. We've got room to grow. Amen? Who's ready to grow? Ephesians 1, I'm going to go to verse 16. Listen to this prayer again from Paul for the church. I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly. Asking God. Here's what Paul was asking God for the church. I ask God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. Do you know there's a whole lot of stuff that we don't know yet fully about God? I don't care if you've been serving Him your whole life. Paul said, I'm praying that you'll have spiritual wisdom and insight that you might grow in your knowledge of God. How many of you guys want to grow in your knowledge of God this year? Amen. Amen. It's a theme. You're going to hear this all year long. It's time to grow, guys. It's time to grow. You're going to hear, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I'm going to be a broken record about this all year. Come on, guys, let's grow, let's grow, let's grow. I want to tell you something, too, that's cool about myself, and Derek's the same way, too. We're kind of like coaches. We kind of have that mentality, like, we want to coach people up. You know, I want people, if you've ever been around coaches, what's their job? Their job is to get those people to their peak performance, get them to the top of their game, Right? The coach ain't even actually out there on the field throwing the ball. The coach is just trying to get them up to where they are supposed to be. Amen? So a lot of what we do from this pulpit and from other angles is we're coaching. We're trying to disciple and help everybody help you. See, it's not an entertainment American church thing where you just watch us do what we do. No, 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 no. That's, that's backwards. Our job is to get you operating at your fullest. Do you see the, the way that that's different? That's what New Testament ministry and Christianity is about. Amen? Let's go to 1 Peter 2. You guys still good? I've got a lot of scriptures. You know me. I'm going to throw a lot of scripture. We're going to have a word bath. 1 Peter 2, 2. Listen to this one. Like I said a minute ago, like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Holy cow. Let's think about right there. A full experience of salvation. Do you know that Jesus died to give you probably way more than you're experiencing? Jesus, when he died on that cross, it wasn't just for you to get a get out of hell free card. It wasn't just for you to go to heaven one day. All of that's true. But there's so much more to this than that. I'm going to say it again. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk 
so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Man, that's good. You know what the old timers used to say? I'm saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost. Y'all heard that? There's a fullness to salvation that's not just I get to go to heaven when I die. There's way more to it than that. Cry out for this nourishment. Now that you've had a taste of the Lord's kindness. How many of you have, have had a taste? You know what that does? That whets your appetite that there's more. If I take one sip of coffee, I want another sip. You know, this food we're going to eat here today, I'm not going to take one bite of it. The first bite is going to make me want to take the second bite. You get that? When we taste of the goodness of God, there's something in us like, oh, I, I, yeah, I need more of that. And then we keep pursuing Him. Amen? 2 Peter 1, 2. May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As we grow in knowledge, it says we're also going to grow in grace and in peace. Amen? Here's a couple more on Peter. Second Peter. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Now listen to this list. This is going to get a little tedious, but, but hang with it. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence. And to moral excellence with knowledge. And knowledge with self-control. And self-control with patient endurance. We love that one. And patient endurance with godliness. And godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love for everyone. Now listen to this next verse. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see that? Now that's a big long list. We could do a whole sermon just on that list, and maybe we will later. But I'm giving you an overview today. We'll, we'll take deep dives into all these things throughout the year. But I'm trying to give you the 30,000 foot view. As we grow in those realities that we just read about, it says that we will be more productive and useful in our knowledge of the Lord. How many of you guys want to be more productive and more useful in your knowledge of God this year? Amen? Again, the goal is to become just like Jesus. Amen? That's the reason. Can I tell you that that's actually the reason Jesus saved you? According to Romans 8.29, you were saved for this purpose. To be conformed into the image of the Son. That's why God saved you. Is to conform you into the image of His own Son, Jesus Christ. That's the goal. You want to, what, what's, my, what's my purpose in life? I just gave you it. Your purpose in life is to be conformed into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Into the image of the Son. Biblically, that is why you're on planet Earth. Right here. If you are a saved individual. Anybody excited about that? It's a lifelong pursuit. 1 Corinthians 3, 6, you're going to like this one because these people were just like us. They were squabbling over Paul, an apostle, and who they followed. Listen to this. Paul said, I planted the seed in your hearts, and Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. Mm, it don't matter who's up here preaching. It don't matter who's throwing seed. Do you see this? It don't matter. It's me this week. It'd be Derek next week. The next week, I think Randy's getting up here. But it's God who makes it grow. Amen? That's why we don't pick favorite preachers. It's kind of pointless. It's God who makes this grow. It's not important who does the planting, Paul said, or who does the watering. What is important is that God makes the seed grow. Amen. Every Sunday that you're in here getting... This teaching, there are seeds going into your heart. You remember a couple weeks ago we talked about the, the sower in Mark 4. But God makes that seed germinate and grow in your heart. And then all of a sudden you realize that you yourself are growing. Amen? This is where we're going. The one who plants and the one who waters work together with the same purpose. And both will be rewarded for their hard work. Isn't that awesome? So I'll just use me and Derek, for example, because you see us up here a lot preaching. Both of us are planting and watering, but we're doing it with the same purpose. We're working hard, but God is the one who makes all of this grow. Amen? This is good. For we are both God's workers, and listen to this, and you are God's field. 
You are God's building. It's time to build. It's time to grow. What is it? It's you. You. You're the building. You're the field. You're the church. This is what God wants to grow this year. Amen? Is anybody excited about that? Or is everybody like, oh, I don't want to grow. I don't know about all this. You got to be stretched. You got to get uncomfortable. You got to be, maybe a coach has to kind of push you further than you want to go. Amen? But you'll be glad that you did. Because of God's grace to me, this is Paul still speaking, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now others are building on it. But whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one we already have, which is what? Jesus Christ. So this is a beautiful picture of what we're trying to do here. We're building, we're laying foundation, we're planting seeds, we're watering, we're doing all this stuff to build the church, which is you. But God, supernaturally, is the one who makes this grow. God's the one who makes you grow. Amen? All you got to do is just stay in the game. Don't disconnect. Don't get spun out. You got to stay in the game. I'm going to even say this. Um, There's just kind of a principle in life. You, you do get out what you put in. You do reap what you sow, right? I'm going to make a challenge to you. I told somebody this, I think, a month ago. I said, if, if you really buckle down and get serious for the next year of your life, okay, so we got all 2022, as it relates even to church life, what if you really, and I'm not talking about like putting stars on a board like perfect attendance like we did in school, but, but what if you really for this year zoned in and honed in and you were here for everything that God flows out of this pulpit this year? They're like installments. There's like stuff that God's trying to put in you. What if you were in that 52 weeks in a row? Do you think that by the end of this year, there'd be something changed on the inside of your heart? You can't be in the presence of God that many times. You can't hear the Word of God preached that many times. You can't be in fellowship with other believers that many times and not grow, which is kind of the whole point, right? So I'm saying you're going to get out what you put in this year. And I get the practical stuff. Lord, we got bunches of people out still because of sick stuff. I know it's been crazy. And thank God we got the web stream, and I'm so glad you guys are still able to tune in. That's another reason we're improving the multimedia is for the web stream. But whether you got to watch it on the web or be here in person, get every installment this year that God is going to want to give you. Amen? Amen. I promise you, you will grow. Amen? James 1, verse 2. This is not a way that we like to grow, but here's one of the fast tracks. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity. Wait a minute. Trouble, an opportunity. What are you talking about? And have great joy about it. Why? For we know that when your faith is tested, endurance has a chance to grow. Yay! God will make sure... That we're in an environment that's suitable to our growth. Which means we will be pushed out of our comfort zones. We will go through hard things that we don't want to go through. All of these things are for what purpose? To cause us to grow. To cause us to keep moving forward. Now this is not the fun way to grow. But I'm telling you it's actually one of the most effective. Do you know that I've grown way more in my hard times than in my good times? How about you? I wish it wasn't that way, but that's just human nature. We learn the most and we grow the most when it's hard. Amen? So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Wow. That's the result of your trials. That's supposed to be the result right there. When your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect, complete, needing nothing. Isn't that amazing? Lord, help us. Give us grace to get there. We just got a few more scriptures, and we're going to pray and be done, and then we're going to eat. 1 Thessalonians. And may the Lord make your love for one another and for all people grow, and not just grow, overflow just as our love for you overflows. Boy, you want to see something that, that we all need to grow in? That right there. Our love for one another. Amen? Our love for the Lord first, of course, but then our love for one another. That's got to grow. 
Amen. May he, as a result, make your heart strong, blameless, and holy as you stand before God, our Father, when the Lord Jesus comes again with all his holy people. Amen. So here's the point. We are all called to grow. Now, you could choose not to. I mean, you could choose to kind of check out or bail out on the processes of God. But I'm telling you, if he's brought you here, he hasn't brought you here to leave you where you're at. I'm speaking as a church here because I know Derek, Randy, myself, we are intent on following the Lord forward. We're not following him backwards and we're not standing still. We're going forward, right? And we're looking for a group of people that are wanting to grow and go with us. Amen? So we're all called to grow in what? In knowledge. How many of us need to grow in our knowledge of God this year? I do. Web streamers, how many of you want to grow in the knowledge of God? In character. Oh, my goodness. Do we ever need to continue to grow in godly character? That's some of that trial stuff, right? That produces that godly character. And ultimately, in love. Every one of us this year needs to grow in love. Amen? And I believe that God is going to create the opportunities for us this year to grow in all three of those areas. In our knowledge of Him, in our own character, and in love for God and for people. Amen? So I want to briefly mention growing wide. I'm not going to take a deep dive into this because we're going to spend a whole Sunday on this when we talk about outreach. But growing deep is that personal devotion, worship, knowing God. But growing wide is where this becomes available to more people. We don't ever want to have a us for and no more attitude around here. We don't ever want to be like, hey, life is really good and we like what we've got and you, know, you, you stay out there. No, the point of the gospel is, yes, grow deep, which we just talked about a lot, but also grow wide. And honestly, if you know me, I've never been a huge numbers guy. I don't think that way because, like I said, my specialty is taking people deeper. But there is validity to also going wider. There is an entire book of the Bible called Numbers. God's not opposed to numbers. He's not opposed to more people. And there will be continually more people as we go forward. But even on a practical note, I I told Derek this the other day. Do you know that in the history of this church, I'm going to tell you something I've never done, ever. And maybe I'll do it right now for the first time. I have never one time in any meeting told people to invite people to church. I've never even publicly ever said that once. Hey, go out this week and find somebody that you think really could come in here and be blessed by the presence of God and the worship and the word and all this stuff. I've never one time encouraged people to do that. I guess I should start doing that because we also need to grow wide. And I'm not talking about stealing people from churches. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about how many people do you know That if they came in here and got touched by God, it would change their lives. And they needed something bad. Amen? If every one of us just brought one other person next week, we're doubled, right? So there's something to this growing wide that I've never put an emphasis on because I'm always so focused on taking people deep. But this year, we're also going to make this effort to grow wide. One thing we're going to do, we're going to do a big block party out here in this parking lot in the spring. We're going to go to every house in this neighborhood. We're going to introduce ourselves. We're going to put flyers in the mailbox. Hey, we're going to have a free cookout. We want to meet the neighbors. Things like that to go wide, okay? Those are outreach type things. So all of that's part of it too. I'll give you the scripture on that. Matthew 28, obviously Jesus right before he ascended. Jesus came and told his disciples, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Okay, so what do we do with that? Therefore, if the Bible says therefore, you need to see what it's there for. Go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. And this is a great promise. Be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen? Amen. So we are to grow deep. We are to sink our roots deep. We are to grow as deep with the Lord as we can, but also not forget to grow wide at the same time. Amen? Because there's a lot of people that don't have even what you already have. There's a lot of people that don't know what you already know. There's a lot of people that need what you have right this second. Amen? So we're going to grow deep and we're going to grow wide. That's the two things we're going to focus on this year. As a church, we are absolutely committed to this. I know 
Derek and I have talked so much just this week about that point of growing deep and wide because you have to make an emphasis to do both. Amen? So 2022, it's time to grow. You guys good with that? Who wants to grow? We volunteer, Lord. We want to grow. He's going to hold you to that. I'm going to tell you what, though. The alternative to growing is dying. Anything that's not growing is dying, so let's grow. Amen? Go team. I'm not really a cheerleader type, but I do really want us to get these things because I know that it's important. I know that as we go forward, um, we are going to see a lot of growth. And I hope that you can look back one year from now. I hope that next New Year's you're looking back going, I can't believe how much I grew in one year. Do you want to have that testimony next January? I do. I I want to stand up here next January and go, I cannot believe how far I came in one year of growing closer to God and becoming who I'm supposed to be. Amen? Amen. Let me tell you this, guys. Life is really short. We get one little blip. I don't care if you live to be Betty White's age. It's still like this. It's a vapor. The Lord says in the Bible, it's a vapor. We got one chance to get this right. Come on, let's swing for the fence. Let's do this. Let's grow into what? The sun. Amen? How many of you guys are excited about that? You should be. And this is definitely what God is going to be doing all year long. So we're going to have a lot of messages throughout this year that will be geared toward growth. And I'm not talking about um, marketing schemes. Like, I'm talking about like personal deep growth with God. Amen? So if you guys will stick with it and you guys on the web, this might be the best year of your life. I didn't say it's going to feel like the best year of your life, but it might be the best year of your life growth-wise. Amen? So I'm just going to pray and then... Uh, We'll get into the food here in a minute. So, Father, thank you for your word. Uh, Lord, your word is true. Let God be true and every man a liar. Your word is true. And, God, I believe, Lord, everything that we read today is your will for us. I believe everything that we read in your word today is your heart toward us. I believe it's what you want for every person in this room and every person watching by the web stream today. I know, God, that you want us to walk uh, as Jesus walked and to grow up and to become mature and to be a true, mature son like Jesus. That is what you're calling each of us to. And also to grow out wide and to be able to reach those and bring them into to, to the reality of where we're at. But Lord, we ask you this year, God, we're going to need a lot of help. We're going to need a lot of grace, Father, to do these things. And so, Lord, it really all starts with surrender. So, God, even, even myself, Lord, I surrender God, to your will and to your plan for this year, for my life. And Lord, as this church, uh, we really do want to grow. We want to grow with you, God. We want to grow into maturity and be what you've called us to be. So, Father, we yield to you. We surrender to you. And Lord, we just uh, trust that, God, you're going to get us where we need to be. You're going to lead us every step of the way. Lord, we just give ourselves wholeheartedly to you. We thank you, Father, for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen.